Hey guys, quick back at Mr. Basics here. Let's talk about histone acetylation. When scientists first purified histones by column chromatography, they were curious to explore the newly purified proteins. For this, the purified histones were hydrolyzed by acid and their amino acid composition was analyzed by paper chromatography. The paper chromatography showed the presence of two types of histones. The one rich in lysine was called lysine-rich histone, while the other that was rich in arginine was called arginine-rich histone. Further analysis of paper chromatogram also showed the presence of modified amino acids such as acetyl lysine and acetyl arginine. So the question is, what is the role of histone acetylation? Well, if we think logically, then lysine and arginine are positively charged amino acids. Whereas DNA on the other hand is negatively charged. This means presence of lysine and arginine allows histones to interact with negatively charged DNA. Addition of acetate group to these will neutralize the positive charge on lysine and arginine and neutralization of charge will in turn affect the binding of histones with the DNA. However, this is just the logical explanation of histone acetylation. Now to support our logical explanation, we also need to verify this experimentally. To study the role of histone acetylation experimentally, histones were taken and divided into two parts. One part was used as a control. In the other part, the histones were chemically acetylated. For this, scientists used the knowledge of organic chemistry. They incubated this mixture with sodium acetate and acetic anhydride. During this incubation, the acetyl groups are chemically transformed to histones. Now remember, this is just the classical experiment to study histone acetylation. Later on, scientists also discovered enzymes that has role in histone acetylation and deacetylation. The enzyme histone acetyl transferase has a role in histone acetylation, whereas the enzyme histone deacetylase has a role in histone deacetylation. Okay, now let's come back to our in vitro experiment, which was based on organic chemistry. Once the histones were acetylated, both the groups were studied under transmission electron microscope. The transmission electron microscopy showed that in the control group, the histones were very well organized, whereas the experimental group where histones were acetylated, the structure was disorganized and showed less number of nucleosomes on DNA. This experiment shows that histone acetylation greatly affects binding of histones with the DNA. The presence of acetyl group on histones does not allow binding of histones with the DNA. Now, on the basis of this experiment, scientists had a hypothesis that acetylation of histones might affect process such as transcription. So to test this hypothesis, they carried out an in vitro transcription assay. In the control group, they added histones, whereas in the experimental group, they added acetylated histones. To monitor the rate of transcription in both the groups, they added labeled uracil. Once the experiment was complete, the newly formed RNA was precipitated and activity of labeled uracil in both the groups was measured. The control group hardly showed any activity, 
whereas the experimental group showed excellent activity of labeled uracil. This means when histones binds DNA, the DNA transcription from this DNA is inhibited. However, when histones are acetylated, they are released from the DNA. This makes the DNA free and accessible for RNA polymerase for transcription.